Can you all? If Peter Jennings was here, you would all be quiet. Uh, I'm Peter Osnos, and uh, I am the founder of Public Affairs, uh, which had the great privilege of being the publisher of this book, Peter Jennings, A Reporter's Life. And uh, I want to start by music. It's a do-over. Um, so uh, I'm Peter Osnos from Public Affairs. <laughs> Take two. Take two. Um, I want to start, first of all, this is a, uh, you know, as I look around the room, there are sort of a lot of people and a lot of different sort of relationships that many of which go back a great many years. And <clears throat> the wonderful thing about all of you here tonight is that you're here in honor of this book about Peter Jennings, A Reporter's Life. And I think he would be very pleased to see the turnout. Uh, first of all, thank you uh, to Kyle and Mitt and to the Copples and the Cochrans for hosting what is clearly a very lavish and wonderful event. Um, we're very, very grateful. I, I can tell you that it's a spectacular party and public affairs doesn't do it this way very often. Uh, <laughs> the uh, editors of the book are here. Lynn Schur. <laughs> Casey Freed Jennings Yay. and Kate Dart, who uh, wrestled Lynn and Casey to the ground. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, I, my colleagues from Public Affairs, Susan Weinberg, the publisher, and Whitney Peeling, the publicity director here. I just want to say that we we in, in New York uh, we had a party that also was in honor of Peter's book. And I uh, was very struck there as we all looked at the book and said, isn't this beautiful? It's a beautiful book. It's a wonderful picture. Peter wouldn't have liked it, actually. He would have said, it's kind of a, you know, maybe chapter three should be chapter six, and, uh, you know, <laughs> chapter two should be chapter four. But <clears throat> this is one occasion when, alas, he cannot be the final editor. We are. Um, he was a remarkable fellow, a great friend. Uh, a really, truly great journalist. And one of the things that we have discovered in working on this book is how powerful Peter's legacy as a reporter really was. Um, everybody who worked with him remembers him for his commitment to a certain level of journalism, a certain level of going after a story, a certain level of passion. Um, it was a great thing to watch and be friend of his and, and occasionally the butt of his criticisms, which most of us were. But he was a, a truly remarkable figure. And a great many things about journalism, particularly broadcast journalism, that are good are good because Peter did them. So here's to our very dear friend Peter and this remarkable book. John Cochran and Ted and Casey are going to say something, so I'm going to get off the ladder before I fall, <laughs> and John is going to get on the ladder, and we'll watch him. Come in and Good, so. More. Push in more, guys, if you like. Look out for the cross. Okay. Okay. Peter, yes. I'm impressed that a man of your years could stand on this. Say, you want me to hold and your arm, John? Since I'm older than you are, would you stand right there, yeah. please? Yes. Um, in her very excellent uh, introduction to this book that we're celebrating tonight, Lynn Sher writes about the many virtues. Speak up. Yes, yes. You, know, you think I would, I would know that talking for a living, right? All right, so, all right. Take two for me, too. In her very excellent introduction uh, to this book that we are celebrating, Lynn Sher outlines many of Peter's virtues that Peter did. And I'm not going to get into that, but Lynn also, at one point, uh, takes about a 150-degree turn and says, there were times when he could be a pain in, and I believe the way you phrase it, Pick the part of your anatomy you want to. <laughs> she writes of how he would uh, lecture her constantly on everything from her boyfriends to her clothes. I cannot speak to the boyfriends, but I can tell you that as a fellow correspondent, I know about being lectured about the clothes. <laughs> Take the simple pocket handkerchief. <laughs> Peter noticed that I was wearing one one night. 
on his program. During the commercial break, <laughs> he calls me and says, about that pocket square, he said, the thing about the pocket square is, if you're going to wear it, you put it right up there, what's the point? <laughs> no, it just looks silly. But if you have it up here, you know, it looks pretentious. Foppish was the word he used. <laughs> so just in case he's watching tonight. Okay, Peter. That's Peter, about right. Peter, Peter had a thing also about ties. Um, and he commented early and often about my ties. Uh, he didn't like them. It finally got to the point. It finally got to the point that Peter called my wife and said, Barbara, you've got to get your husband some new ties. Peter, this is one of those ties. Oh. Don't like it. It's, too late. it's not my fault. <laughs> one thing Peter may not know about people may not know about Peter is that he really didn't like to talk about himself. He got uncomfortable. He would do it after a couple of drinks, well actually not a couple, a couple of glasses of very fine wine over a very good meal. He would loosen up and talk about himself. But mostly he wanted to talk about you. And when he would come down to Washington on assignments, come down and I'd get into a room with him and he'd close the door, pull up the chair, look me in the eye and say, so, how are you? Really? <laughs> this went on for years until his last trip to Washington. We, of course, didn't know it was his last trip to Washington. I think it was just about a week before he had, he had his test. And uh, I knew he hadn't been feeling well. So same routine. Peter said, close the door. So, John, how are you? Really, I said, Peter, this time we're not doing that. Just, you know, this time it's about you. And uh, how are you feeling? So we, we talked about that, the, the physical problems. And I decided at one point it was time to change the subject. And I said, well, how are the contract negotiations going with ABC? <laughs> Something really sensitive. <laughs> and he said, you know, they're going great. They're going great. But he said, you know, this time it's not about the money. I don't care about the money. He said, you know what I'm trying to get out of him this time? Time off. I've been on television enough. I've been on television a lot. Now I want to get more time off, and I want to spend it with Casey and the kids. And I've never forgotten that since, since then. And it's been a great comfort to me, and it should be to all of you too, that many of years of his life, final years of his life, Peter was very happy in his private life. Mm -hmm. And for that, we think, in large part, our co-editor tonight, mm -hmm. Casey. Mm -hmm. Casey. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. She also, in putting this book together, along with her fellow co-editors, they have given us something that we will can always go back in the years to come. We can go back and have spend time with Peter. The great thing about this book, if you, if you haven't read it yet, is it's the kind of book you can put on the nightstand. You, you probably don't want to finish it in one night, maybe not even one week, but you can dip into it because it's, it's anecdotal and everybody has something different to say about Peter. So it's great to know for years to come we can go back and dip into it in times when we just want to visit Peter again. Thank you all very much. No